Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James's greatest stories, part two. This is a three-part series. The first episode was released last week on the channel, so if you haven't seen it, go watch that episode first. I'd really, really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button to support the channel. If you are new around here and you think you may enjoy the series, be sure to check the playlist link in the description box down below or on your top right. And if you enjoy the series, hit that subscribe button. And you can also hit that notification button so you are notified when a new episode releases. Without further ado, comment down below which player you would like to see next. And here is the complete collection of LeBron James's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part two. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. And I turned on ESPN one day, LeBron James was the guy that people says the next Jordan. Tim, in your opinion, what do you think is wrong with, with LeBron James' offense? I don't think there's anything wrong with LeBron's offense. Yo, he knows everything that's going on on that court. He knows where everyone's supposed to be. He knows he knows if the play is real, if the play is fake. He knows exactly what is expired all through that game. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know where he is, but mentally, I mean, he was like shooting 60% for weeks, you know, and I mean, he wasn't missing. He made, made it easy then. It's like, all right, cool. I'll be here on defense. When you think about LeBron James and KD, number one, is he that rival for you? And if it is LeBron, how did LeBron make you a better player? Well, since I was in ninth grade um, and I turned on ESPN one day, LeBron James was the guy that people says the next Jordan. LeBron James has about a 40 inch vertical leap, unlimited range on his jump shot, but the strength of his game could be his passing. James is young enough to have been born during Michael Jordan's rookie season and talented enough that some say he might be the next Jordan. The two number 23s have already played together. For me, they could be compared to Michael, Magic, you know, Kobe, all the ones that make it so success in the league. You know, it's great, and I'm going to just keep working hard, and someday it could be another one that could be compared to me. So in my mind, I was a 6'2", like, JV player. I didn't I didn't play varsity my first year, my, my ninth grade year, so in my mind, I was like, this is the best player, so I have to be as good as this, or I have to look him in the eyes at some point in my career. So, you know, that was always in the back of my mind as I worked, as I played games. I wonder, because that's what was told to me, that that was the new guy, that was the next Jordan. So, you know, but just having somebody that's been around since I took basketball serious and we're still playing against each other, that's pretty special to me, the longevity, you know, and you can call it a robbery, you can call it whatever, but to have somebody at the same position, whereas we guarding each other, uh, when we play is uh, is definitely special because he's one of the best players that ever touched the floor. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. It was a one that's always scored. I, was a that's always I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying. And, and I, people might disagree with me, but understand this. The greatest scorer is not only its consistency, its longevity, and its amount. Like I know, and it's weird. I know because it's weird when you when you you don't think of him as that. He doesn't approach the game as that. But when you look at the records, they are that. <laughs> See, yeah, and that's the and that's the that's a, so like if someone says who is the so, best natural score in the game today, everyone's gonna say you know KD. I would, yeah. yeah. But who's the best scorer of all time? <laughs> It'd be LeBron. That's it's the, like, when the number should because that's longevity, yeah, and, but, but, and he could do anything he wants on the court. No, but it's long. You say longevity. Like, how did Kareem and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and Karl Malone get to that level? Kareem longevity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was all longevity. So it's like LeBron James playoff scoring, right? Playoff scoring. He passed Michael Jordan three seasons ago, and he's going to add to that, right? Or before his career ends. So to pass LeBron James in all-time playoff scoring records, somebody is going to have to do what? average 30 <laughs> points a game and go to like 13 NBA finals. That shit's not gonna be broken. That, the, the playoff one's not, and then he's gonna pass Kareem. So as much as we don't view him as a scorer, 
right? Like Steph's greatest shooter, Kevin Durant, greatest like weapon as a scorer because he's so big. But like, who's the greatest scorer? He's number four all time right now. You know, so funny. I had an argument with someone about that, and it was like, uh, it was like uh, he's not even a, a, a natural scorer. And I was like, and that should be funny because <laughs> the guy who's a fast, per, a fast uh, pass first thinker has beaten out two dominant scores. Guys that like, just scored. They first. just scored first, and and that's not a disrespect. So how, how do you first? <laughs> like I said, how do you say he's not <laughs> twenty five points a game for fifteen straight years? When you're talking about the greatest scorers of all time, would you put Michael Jordan and Kobe and Kareem and Karl Malone mm -hmm. up there? But you don't consider Braun, even though he's about to pass <laughs> all of those guys. But that's <laughs> Tim, in your opinion, what do you think is wrong with, with LeBron James's offense? I don't think there's anything wrong with LeBron's offense. You can live with him knocking down jump shots. Parker and Duncan each with 16. James to the basket, inside, banks it in, and there's his first field goal after missing his initial eight shots from the field. I'll rephrase the question. What are you guys doing schematically to limit him offensively? We're guarding him with five guys. All by, by doing it with pack it in or, uh, you know, what else tactically? I mean, every, every, every team tries to guard him with five guys in one way or another. What are the Spurs doing that's different than well, other players? We understand opponents? what kind of player he is. He, he, he is the, the, the best player in the world. So we're respecting him as that. So we're, we're, uh, we're trying to make his life as difficult as possible. And uh, every time he touches the ball, if we can keep him out of the open court, that's obviously where he really thrives. And uh, if we can keep those away and keep his, you know, his rhythm down, then it's better for us. Great job, man. Good job. Hey, man. I love how you're on 15 minutes. Stay that way, man. Stay that way. You're going to drive these guys. This is going to be your league in a little while. But uh, I appreciate you giving us this here. <laughs> That was, of course, after the final game. You said, this is going to be your league, but I appreciate you giving us a year. What was that moment like? Um, you could just tell what he was going to be and who he was going to be, and uh, that he was going to be such a dominant player for such a long time. And uh, uh, it, was, it was great playing games early and, again, uh, late in my career. Was, was Miami LeBron peak LeBron? Yeah, I have to argue. I think um, he's, he's transformed so many times, but I feel... He was on another planet. Um, and just watching his, his, his trajectory uh, of his career, you just, just see it coming. Um, but uh, uh, playing against a, a, a young LeBron and an, old, and an older LeBron, <laughs> yeah. uh, two different players, two totally different players. And it was, it, was, it was fun to watch and be a part of. And it got to the point where we were just kind of, I'm a pretty good basketball player. But I'm kind of just watching him do his thing right now because he's just, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know where he is, but mentally, I mean, he was like shooting 60% for weeks, you know, and I mean, he wasn't missing. He made it easy then. It's like, all right, cool. I'll be here on defense getting some stops. I'll be open whenever you guys need me. It just became, yeah, it became, he, 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 was, he was very, very motivated to be successful. LeBron, you've talked about how much smarter you are compared to uh, the 2007 Finals, but what about on the court, your jump shot? Are you more confident now and the improvement since then? How is that going to affect how they guard you this time around? Oh, uh, well, I think in 07, they, um, they, you know, they kept, you know, when I got the ball, they kept me on the sideline. They went under a lot of my pick and rolls and dared me to shoot. And uh, back in 07, I, I ran a lot of pick and rolls. Um, and. You know, they funneled me to the to the sideline with, you know, Duncan and Alberto and, and Bruce Bowen and Michael Finley and those guys that just funneled me all the way to the sideline and dared me to shoot and, you know, didn't allow me to get into the paint where I, you know, did most of my damage back in 07. So, um, if you go under my pick and roll now, I'm going to shoot. And, uh, and I'm confident I'm going to make every last one of them. Up a lot more. James for three. Sit down. James sets three-pointer. It's good. Wide open for three. That's three three-pointers for LeBron James. James will try another three. Hucks it in. LeBron James, fourth three-pointer of the game. Again, look how far up they're playing. He'll try it again. It's good. LeBron James making the Spurs pay. 20 minutes. James pulls up, puts it in. James puts it up, knocks it down. 
James pulls up, puts it in, four-point lead. We haven't seen a player like Michael Jordan or Kareem or someone of that level change his game as much as it seems like LeBron has changed his. Would you say that's right? Absolutely. I'm just more confident in my ability to shoot the ball. Um, but at the same time, I also have um, a lot more weapons with me. We could put him off the ball, have him working off of cuts, you know, make a play for him, you know, um, get him in the post, you know, get the pick and roll, excuse me, get the pick and roll. You know, we, he, he functioned in, in different spots in, 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 um, in the court, but he had Ray Allen to kick it to and James Jones and Mike Miller to kick it to. I mean, dead eye spot up shooters, you know? So I think that made him a little more dangerous, uh, but still either way, it's like, 1A and 1B to me. I mean, you know, I'll take I'll take his fifth best career and that'll be the best of my, you know, <laughs> best ever. <laughs> to to stay at the top of the league for this long and to perform the way he has is absolutely amazing. Just to pick up on something you said the other day, Pop, about LeBron, I just asked him, you know, when people say you need to be more aggressive and he just cut me off and he goes, I don't really care what people say about me needing to be more aggressive. You've kind of picked up on the fact that he's really kind of somehow changed his approach in terms of the noise. Yeah, you know, I've said it a lot. You know, you know during the season, people ask me, you know, before the playoffs, I mean, he, he's grown. He's, he's a grown man. Uh, he doesn't need any of you to tell him anything. He knows more than all of you put together. He understands the game. Uh, if he makes a pass, uh, and you all think he should have shot it or he shoots it and you think he should have made a pass, your opinions mean nothing to him, as they should not mean anything to him. Uh, he's a great player, and uh, his decisions are what they are. It's a game. All decisions don't work out. They didn't always work out for Michael or Tim Duncan or Shaquille O'Neal or Kobe Bryant or whoever. Uh, you, you make a decision, and that's what you go with. But. Uh, all the chirp, chirp, chirping about what he should have done. Uh, I thought it was hilarious from the beginning. And frankly, I was very happy for him as the year progressed when it became obvious he was comfortable in his own skin and didn't need to listen to any of you all. You know, um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I always think about like, how did I lock it to somebody up? <laughs> how much did somebody have against me? Mm -hmm. LeBron, he averaged 25. <laughs> he, LeBron came into the league, uh, first game in Indiana. Oh, so pissed. First game in Indiana, he gave me 25. Mm. He went to the fans and said, this is your best defender, right? I heard this, right? I'm fucking furious. I know you're furious. You, I'm, I'm, I walked the other way. I'm like, this kid is great. I got out of this kid. is fucking really good. <laughs> but I'm super fucking pissed. He disrespect me. And I want to walk up to this motherfucker. And, you know, he, he, but he bust my ass. Yeah, right? He done to all of us. You know, so he... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First game. Mm -hmm. So that was like, wow. <laughs> this is crazy. Can you talk about your relationship with LeBron James? Yeah, I've seen him play. He's very talented. The first. <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm growing up and I'm watching, you know, this guy, Michael Jordan. I think all you guys know him, I think. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I'm growing up watching this guy on TV every day, and uh, I'm like, wow, you know, he's an amazing basketball player, and hopefully someday I get an opportunity to meet him, so. Oh, yeah, when you first met Mike, like, how did you feel? Amazing. It was probably how guys feel when they meet LeBron. Um, I think it was my junior year of high school. I go up to Chicago, and I go to a gym called Hoops, where he, he plays basketball in the summertime. Yeah. I was in Chicago because I got drafted, and then, like, you know, the runs was at Hoops. And we were getting ready to leave, and we were literally walking out the door. This red Ferrari pulls down the street, and it was literally like, for LeBron and I, it was like Black Jesus was coming down the street <laughs> in a red Ferrari with a bucket cap on. I didn't know he was going to be there, but I seen him. I seen him walking towards me, and it was kind of like he was walking on air. He, I, I was. I had to. I had to pinch myself. Was, was is that my, Michael? Who? And it was, it's like, he was like black Jesus to me. Like. And Michael sat and had a conversation with us just about basketball. And I honestly don't remember anything that was said in the conversation. It was like everything just sounded like blurred out to me. Like I was listening <laughs> to God speak. It was like, I don't even remember what he was saying. And that was the first time he met Michael and myself. You're saying when he was 16, you guys would go 
to the Hoops Gym, the famous Hoops Gym in Chicago, and play with a bunch of pros. Tell me about, about that. So we went over that spring and took LeBron, and we were kind of just like in awe, literally like in awe. It was like during the days, like all the pros would come in, like Antoine Walker, Ron Artest, and Jamal Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Finley was in there, Stackhouse was in there, a young LeBron was in there. Did he know of you? Well, yeah, I think he did. He, mm -hmm. you know, he, he called me a young fella, of course, yeah. uh, you know, and just basically told me to keep working at it and someday I can get to the NBA. I was a junior in high school, so, uh, yeah. you know, I guess he told me something right and I just kept working at it. At first, it was like LeBron was this 16-year-old kid. They're like, you know, he couldn't get in the first game or two because they, they're pros. Why the hell do they care Great about a 16-year-old high, yeah, high school player? What, who the hell is that? What yeah. difference does it make? We're here to get our work in and we're trying to get better. But then Tim would let him in at the end of the run. Yeah, I was Twan there. Twan brought him out there. That's I, why I he gave was him a forearm on fast break. He was coming. He was cooking. He was cooking. He couldn't, nobody can guard him. LeBron James. At all. He couldn't guard him. I'm like, I'm getting embarrassed. He's embarrassing us. He was out there playing. And if you watch the game, he wasn't like dominating. Yeah. He wasn't like, but he didn't stick out. You didn't go like, oh, there's a kid out there. It was like, oh, there's just another player out there. Like, you know, he got a couple buckets. <laughs> He's coming out full speed, LeBron James. Like, boom. I lay him on the floor. He get up and start cooking more. He's just tough. He's about, he was about 225 at that time. Mm. But I remember him just being tough. LeBron was nice, huh? 15 years old, a killer. And I remember, mm. he was big and strong and they couldn't guard him. That's yeah. how that wins clutch points. He was definitely playing well. What was it like meeting uh, Michael Jordan for you? Was that pretty cool? Oh yeah, it was great. You know, um, for him, for me to meet Michael Jordan, it was like, I think it was better than the president. I look at it like you're not going to get any better if you don't play hard and you're not going to get any better if you're not trying to win every time. It seems like every drill that we do, we keep score. And if you lose, you run. No one likes to run. Running for no reason just is, is not what no one likes to do. So when you're out there, you're just kind of trying to compete, trying to win every time you're out there. Just play as hard as you can. If you're going up against me, you're trying to bust me up because I'm going to come at you the same way, you know? They always want us to address this on social media. They got like the one little clip going around from right before I was about to draft LeBron. Just so like D Miles, Bulls, like Ricky Davis. I want to say maybe yeah. Smith. It showed like three or four of them. And it seemed like they saying like some Hayden stuff. Is the 18 year old from Akron truly the savior? We have better players than him in his position already on our team, bro. Um, his potential is probably the sky's the limit for him, though. Good LeBron is just gonna add add to what we need and you know just make make things a little bit easier. This young kid gets picked up uh, on the team. He's on the cover of this magazine, cover of that magazine. I saw LeBron uh, on this channel, that channel. He's dunking over pimple faced punks <laughs> in Akron. I was like, ah, yeah, let me see some real action. Yeah. At what point did you realize that he was totally legit and the real thing? And did you ever imagine that he would wind up being this great? Well, I knew he was the real thing when he came in. Um, you it did? Was just, it was just a matter of time to when he was going to pick up and when he was going to actually learn the game. It's a difference in being great and learning the NBA game. And him coming in at an early age, um, it was a good fit. He came in and he did his thing. But when, when he first came into training camp, like he was NBA ready? Well, he was still young, but... Was he uh, confident? He was confident. He was still a little nervous, still kind of feeling his way. Um, but, you know, he had a lot of hype to live up to, um, and it, it was tough to live up to that hype. But uh, he played hard, and, you know, 